Here today at the Memorial Sloan Kettering, we're speaking with a medical oncologist, Dr. Leonard Saul, who focuses on the colon cancer space. And we're here today to talk about a uh, sounding board paper that was published in the New England Journal by uh, Thomas Smith and uh, Dr. Hilner. And it talks about uh, bending the cost curve in uh, cancer care. And uh, we're interviewing Dr. Salt. You've been on our show before, and you've been pioneering this concept going back to 2000 before, earlier when Avastin was, was first approved you've been warning that these drugs are very expensive and um, first uh, so we've already interviewed Dr. Smith we don't need to go into that paper in detail but can you give us your overall opinion what do you think of his of his recommendations and his thoughts I think they're on target I think they are accurately identifying a very real problem and I think they are proposing some potential solutions I'm very concerned that making those solutions come about is going to be very very difficult Right. That's that's what I really want to talk to you about is how practical are these? Or will they happen soon or not? Um, and so in his paper, he has five specific proposals that he calls suggested changes in oncologist behavior. So mm -hmm. why don't we go down each one of these and mm -hmm. give us your thoughts of whether it's pie in the sky, it might mm -hmm. be happening, maybe you've already seen examples of it happening. So the first one is uh, he really wants to curtail medical imaging. Right now, there's a lot of CAT scans, PET scans, other types of expensive medical imaging that mm -hmm. happens after a patient's tumor has been diagnosed and treated. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, can you summarize, wh what is he saying to do there, and uh, um, um, do you think that's feasible? I think it's correct. I think it's going to require some external regulation to make happen because I think that both doctors and patients love to get scans. Uh, before we get into the financial aspect, because there are often situations where there may be direct financial mm -hmm. conflicts of interest involved in who is ordering versus who is owning the resource where the scans are being done, uh, the fact is that it provides a sense, rightly or wrongly, of close observation, uh, of taking good care, if you will, of the patient. Um, the problem is, and you can get into this with any kind of imaging, whether it's talking about something as controversial as the frequency of mammography or the appropriateness of following up a patient with pancreas cancer with scans, you can run into false positives. You can run into early findings that are equivocal that can lead to things that involve invasive procedures on a patient that would otherwise have not been necessary. So. The scans themselves may be the tip of the iceberg in terms of not only the cost, but the potential downside to the patient. Everybody wants a scan, and they want the scan to have good news. There is the wish, wishful thinking, if you will, that when I get a scan, it will show me what I want it to show me. Do you find patients really want this? There's a demand for, from patients after they're diagnosed? Yes, and in fact, even when I have patients who are being managed at pretty much the end of, of, of life care, where we've exhausted standard therapies, we've agreed that we're focusing on their comfort and general well-being and not going to do specific anti-cancer therapy because we don't really have other drugs to try, uh, patients will request scans. Mm -hmm. And when we get into a discussion, why do you want that? Well, it would be nice to know. Well, we're treating you, we're not treating your scan. So let's take a medical center like uh, this hospital, mm -hmm. uh, for example, as opposed to a private practice, oncology practice. So let's say there's an administrative meeting and you decide to implement this. Mm -hmm. What would be the hurdles to doing that? Would it be patient pushback or would, the, uh, would it be a practical loss of revenue? Uh, or, or are you, you all are paid on a flat salary basis. That's correct. So Everybody there's, here is full-time faculty. So there's not a, there wouldn't be a financial disincentive from the individual doctor level. What might right. prevent this from being implemented right here? Well, I think that doctors, for the most part, I'd like to assume all the time, are acting in what they believe is the patient's best interest. There isn't always universal agreement on what that is. Where everybody agrees this is the one right answer, there's really very little variation. Uh, in terms of how much benefit is there in terms of, of getting a more frequent or less frequent scan, of getting a tumor marker that's prognostic, uh, there are simply differences of opinion. And in the absence of a situation where somebody takes the authority and mandates this is what you must do, this is what you must not do, you're going to have a wide assortment of, of approaches. To some degree, it's what uh, one of my colleagues, Larry Norton, calls the tyranny of expert opinion, that we've allowed pretty much anybody who is a doctor to declare themselves expert on the topic they're taking care of and decide how they feel about 
uh, the, the information and often there is a certain amount of subjectivity. There are rarely hard data that prove that one way is right or wrong.